Uh, so folks can check that out. But in the meantime, since I have you on the phone, because I know this is also sort of in your wheelhouse, um, it is being reported, and I, I'm not quite sure where we are in the reporting at this point, but that um, uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, believes that she has a deal now for the USMCA. This is sort of the updated NAFTA. Um, and supposedly Richard Trumka is on board um, give me well, the AFL just the, the AFL CIO just put out a press release signed by Trump confirming that. OK, I did not know that. And OK, so give me your uh, reaction to this, uh, because um, my my hot take, this is um, a disaster, <laughs> frankly, uh, on some level, maybe not so much in terms of the deal, but in terms of um, the uh, the political implications for this. Yeah, I think it's a travesty. I think it's an absolute disaster. And I think, um, in fairness to Trump, I think the labor movement was split. You had some unions who thought this was a good deal. The machinists just came out against it. So he was he was facing the split in the labor movement. Uh, he was facing a lot of pressure from Pelosi uh, to, to get this done. But I just... What what just bewilders me is the following. Here you have an impeachment resolution about to be voted. And why Nancy Pelosi would pick this moment to make Donald Trump look good is beyond me. I mean, I think I understand the politics. I think some of the so-called frontline Democrats, the Democrats who won House seats in districts that voted for Trump, kind of like the idea of associating themselves with a policy that is one part Trump and one part something that left wing Democrats uh, and other Democrats have been pushing on. But I think uh, Trump succeeded in co-opting them. You can just imagine this smug bastard standing up there with the AFL uh, eating out of his hand. And this is going to really damage the Democrats next year because Trump is going to be able to say, hey, look, man, even the AFL CIO supported me. I delivered for working people. And, um, that should have trumped, no pun intended, the 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 fact that the USMCA, so-called, is a little bit better than the original NAFTA, because it's only a little bit better. So, uh, I, God, it's a head-scratcher. You, you wonder, I mean, I think there was too much inside baseball, too much um, political calculation about how this would help a handful of House Democrats. And then, of course, you had guys like Richie Neal, the head of the Ways and Means Committee and other corporate Democrats really pushing for this because American business wanted this. Right. So it's it's everything that, that makes you exasperated about the Democratic Party. I mean, the the I mean, first off, the uh, I, I already can tell folks what the Facebook ads, whatever the ads are going to be yeah. in Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. It's going to be a picture of Donald Trump with Richard Trumpka. A- absolutely. And and. And this guy's about to be impeached. So why you would do anything to associate progressive Democrats with Donald Trump at this moment in history is is beyond me. I would also add that we have a, a clip of uh, Wilbur Ross that we're going to play a little later going on Fox News saying that the only reason why the Democrats are doing this is to distract from the uh, inspector general report. I mean, they, their ability to leverage these things so far yep. outpaces, um, and, and I, I don't know, I, I, this is, I just, I, it's, it's stunning to me. It's such bad, uh, stupid politics, and there is no, uh, as far as I can tell, you know, sort of significant material benefit to anybody. Um, it's not like they held out for something that was absolutely crazy. My understanding is that uh, Pelosi's attempts to strip uh, the, the sort of 230 provision uh, or, you know, the... Uh, the provision that gives uh, 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 liability protection to uh, tech companies, that failed. So that's still in there, which is going to implicate U.S. law going forward. Um, this thing seems like a massive disaster. At what point do people start to say that Nancy Pelosi doesn't know what she's doing? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I by, by coincidence, I was at... Uh, a uh, dinner with a bunch of uh, Democratic progressive Congress people. This is about a month ago. And at that point, the progressives in Congress were, were putting all their chips on Rich Trump and hanging tough. And, and, and the, de- the Democrats' line was, well, 
if if Trump is against it, we're against it. If Trump is for it, we can vote for it. And so they were betting the farm that Trump would hang tough. But uh, and, and I, I get the jam that he's in. Some of his unions want it. Some of his unions don't want it. What I don't get is Pelosi deciding that this was the moment to give Trump bragging rights for anything. I mean, if they just delayed for a year, get a Democrat elected president, and and then renegotiate NAFTA properly, that would have made so much more sense. Unbelievable. Um, It really does seem to be about um, uh, 10 so-called frontline uh, Democrats who... um, you know, as far as I can tell, that um, the the campaign manager Donald Trump put out a uh, uh, the other day some uh, internal polling that they had about uh, I can't remember who it was, a congresswoman from Oklahoma, uh, bragging that uh, that impeachment was hurting her, and uh, the the polling showed that the impeachment was actually doing better than she was in yeah. that district. You I know, mean, it, th- it, it, it's even it's even worse than the so-called frontline Democrats. It's the corporate Democrats using the frontline Democrats. The, the, the people who were pulling the strings on this were, were the corporate Democrats who wanted to vote with the Republicans. And then, so the poster children for this were the, hey, we got to, you know, it, it's not as if voters in Oklahoma City or voters in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Western Illinois or voters in any of the other congressional districts that were taken by Democrats that had gone for Trump we're sort of following all the nuances of one of the most convoluted pieces of trade legislation in the history of the world. Uh, this is about headlines and bragging rights. And if this had gone down, it's not like this is at the top of the list of things that uh, ordinary working people care about. Yeah, it's stunning. It's a stunning failure of politics that I think uh, the Democratic leadership just he keeps um, sort of showing us new um, uh, a, a new achievements in failures, it seems to me, at least uh, political sensibilities. Um, you know, and I, I've been a Nancy Pelosi fan. I've been a Nancy Pelosi defender, but I, there's no way I can defend this. And I'm sort of, as someone who really admires Trump, I'm just really saddened that Trump did this. And there's no, I mean, this is a, this is a done deal at this point now. Yeah, they, the, well, the, the last thing preventing it from being a done deal was Trump explicitly endorsing it, which he did in a press release a half hour ago. Right. All right. Well, uh, Robert Kuttner, uh, founding co-editor of The American Prospect, uh, folks can head over to uh, prospect.org to uh, check out the Green New Deal vertical. Uh, There's uh, 20-some-odd pieces there that cover uh, really every aspect of actually getting this uh, done. Uh, Robert, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Joyce. Thanks for having me, Sam.